Oh, hello. One second. Sorry about that. I didn't. I didn't see you there. <laughs> so yeah. Um. Welcome to this week's episode of Confessions from the Woods. Um. Yeah. We're just pretty much gonna get into it. Um. And get started. How about that? Um. This episode seems a tad a little bit longer than last week's premiere so I guess we'll see but yeah so let's get started welcome to episode 2 of Confessions from the Woods this episode is called Bleeding Hearts stars over here we got the dogs so that's exciting so if you hear an interruption it's probably the dogs but anyways all right so we're gonna get started we're going to 2004 <clears throat> flashback Tanner's mother is lying in a hospital bed breathing slower and slower the machines surrounding her are making noises that surround the air Tanner is standing next to her bed, holding her hand, and there are tears running down his face. Tanner's mother stops breathing, and his father comes into the room crying, telling Tanner that it's okay to cry and that Mommy is in heaven now with his grandparents. The loss of his mother affected him deeply. His father held him there until they took his mother's lifeless body away. Back to 2014, present day. Tanner is in his room playing video games on his cell phone, lying in bed in his pajamas, pants, but a shirt off. Tanner has always been a loner kind of guy, sticking to his own path and minding his own business. He has few friends and lives with his widowed father. He plays video games in his free time and pretty much doesn't do much else. Tanner is a closet bisexual. He doesn't know what he wants and gets very confused about everything when it comes to men and women. There is a knock at Tanner's door. Tanner gets out of bed and goes to answer it. Adam is standing in the doorway and smiles as Tanner opens the door. Adam says, Damn dude, you've been working out, haven't you? Tanner laughs and says, Oh, stop Adam. Adam says, anyways, I can hang for a little bit. I don't have anything to do until my NA meeting later. Tanner says, yeah, that's cool. Come on in. They walk into the house as Tanner closes the door behind them and walk into Tanner's bedroom. Tanner flops onto the bed and motions for Adam to come over and join him. Adam takes off his shirt and hops into bed with Tanner. 
Tanner passes him a remote control and then they play some video games. Adam and Tanner have a weird relationship. They met last year at a party when Tanner and his father moved to the area. Tanner hangs with Adam because Adam makes him feel wanted and has been a good friend to him since they met. Although Adam is a troublemaker, Tanner is not. And there are quite a few things that Tanner doesn't know about Adam just yet. All right, let's get to Hillary's house. Hillary's house. Rick is wandering around the house and notices that Hillary and Adam are gone for the day, and he realizes that he has nothing to do. Bored and restless, he decides to smoke a joint and go for a walk down the trail. He puts the joint out and begins walking down the trail of dead trees. And it just so happens that that trail leads to Tanner's house. And maybe, just maybe, he would stop by and say hi along the way. Rick walks along the trail and through the forest with the sun peeking through the tops of the trees, he approaches Tanner's house. He was about to walk up to the front steps when he heard the door open and out steps Adam. Oh no. Rick hides in the trees as Adam kisses Tanner on the cheek and begins walking away. Tanner shuts the door and Rick sees an opportunity to sneak away back to the trail. Moments later, Rick runs into Annabelle, who is out walking her dog. She offers to walk with him. They are walking along the trail when Annabelle begins telling him about the incident with Victor the night before. Here she goes. She'll say a lot. <clears throat> Yeah, I guess Victor and Adam were attacked by some creature last night at the barn. They don't know what it was or couldn't see anything, but it was big enough to knock Victor over through a door, they said, anyways. I will have to take you to the barn sometime. It's a grow house of glory, let me tell you. But yeah, some creepy shit going on around here, I'm telling you. That is weird that you mentioned that because last night I heard growling noises outside my window. It was very disturbing and really creepy. Do you guys have a lot of big animals out here? The only thing I could think of it being would be a bear. But those things do not fuck around. Although it's been a while, but this area has had some Sasquatch sightings in recent years. In fact, even dating back to the 1960s, I know a lot about this shit because Victor studies up on folklore and things that go bump in the night. Oh, that is really cool. I like stuff like that as well. Damn, I have never been anywhere where there's Bigfoot sightings. That is actually kind of creepy. <coughs> Dude, this place is so messed up. We even have UFO sightings. There is like some weird vortex around Northern Heights that just seems to cause weird paranormal activity. I mean, we even have an insane asylum that they turned into a hotel back in the 2000s. Damn, says Rick as he lights up the other half of his joint and takes a drag of it. He passes the joint to Annabelle, and she smiles. She takes a hit of the joint and passes it back to Rick. She blows out smoke and begins talking again. So yes, cheers. So yeah. So you have a thing for Tanner, huh? I saw you sneaking away from his house just as Adam was strolling down the road back to your place. Trust me, I know everything around here. <laughs> it's uh, more of a crush, really. 
And I don't really know him, but get this weird butterfly feeling when he's around. He's just so hot. And I don't, I don't know. Just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, Tanner is a good guy. It's Adam that you have to watch out for. He is trouble. That whole little relationship that they have going on is a joke. If Tanner only knew what Adam did to him the first night that they met at that party, Tanner would have nothing to do with him. In fact, Adam should be in jail. Again. Again? Yeah. Adam has been in and out of juvie most of his teen life and got stuck with Hillary because he has a lot of issues. I mean drugs, alcohol, sex, like bad shit, man. He will sleep with anything, I swear. So if I were you... I would watch myself around him because he can get you into trouble. That is why Hillary babies him and keeps a close eye on him. Hillary has bared the weight of that child all of her life. I feel bad for her sometimes because she is such a nice lady. Yes, she is very nice, especially for letting me stay with them. Ever since my incident, things just haven't been the same. I mean... I almost killed someone because of my drug addiction. Like, that is just so hard to pass up. Dude, I under I totally understand. That shit must suck. They continue walking through the forest as Rick lights up a cigarette and smoke follows them through the air down the trail. Hello. Welcome back. Water is always good. Um, Alright, we're going flashback. One year ago. So one year ago. So it's 2014. So one year ago would be 2013. There's a party raging on at someone's house. There are people everywhere, from a teen puking on the sidewalk to a girl dancing on the dining table. Couples making out everywhere, guys and girls dancing throughout the house. Tanner had never really been to a party before and had decided to go to this one. He started drinking when he arrived and almost two hours later, after almost a whole bottle of fireball and some tequila shots, he was pretty fucked up. This was the night that he met Adam. Adam was quietly watching Tanner throughout the party, eyeing him down as his next target. He approached Tanner only when he knew Tanner was blackout drunk and wouldn't remember anything. Adam brought Tanner up to one of the bedrooms and walked him into that room. Tanner was mumbling stuff when Adam passionately kissed him and began ripping off his clothes. Tanner tried to fight back, but Adam kept pursuing him, with his hands trying to get Tanner's clothes off. <clears throat> Tanner pushes Adam to the floor and Adam punches Tanner in the face and Tanner falls over to the bed on his stomach. Adam pulls down his pants and rips Tanner's pants off. He takes his cock and plunges it into Tanner's tight virgin asshole. Tanner tried to scream but Adam pushed his head down into the bed. Adam strokes back and forth a couple times until he finishes inside him and finally lets Tanner go. Tanner passed out from the pain of the experience and wakes up the next morning on the floor of the bedroom. His pants are to his feet with just his boxers on. He gets up and gets dressed and casually walks out of the house of passed out hungover fools and shamely walks back home not knowing what had happened and why he is in so much pain. Tanner's house. On the way back home from their walk, Rick decides to take a chance and stop by Tanner's house and ask him out. He gets the nerve to walk up to the door and rings the doorbell. A few seconds later, Tanner opens the door, shirtless of course, and is really happy to see Rick. Tanner offers Rick to come in and Rick apologizes that he must get home for dinner and that he can't stay, but he also wanted to know if Tanner would like to hang out sometime and do something fun. Tanner smiled and agreed to that and surprisingly walks up to Rick and gives him a hug goodbye. Rick almost melts as he feels Tanner's tight ripped body hug him. 
Tanner goes back into his house and Rick begins to head home. As soon as Rick gets home, he rushes into his bedroom and jerks one out to the thought of Tanner shirtless. Later that night, Tanner's dad arrives home from a rough day at work and does nothing but yell at Tanner and complain to him about how hard his day was at the factory. His dad grabs a couple more beers out of the fridge and walks into the living room to sit down in his favorite brown chair. Tanner gets upset at this and runs up to his room. He sits on the edge of his bed and stares at a picture of his mother and him. Tears begin to fall down his face as he misses her. house. Annabelle stopped by to bring Rick some articles on Bigfoot that Victor had so that Rick could read some of the sightings and stories to get a good idea of what kind of noises that they were dealing with outside the house. Just as Rick is talking to Annabelle about it, the noise happens again and this time Annabelle hears it as well and freaks her out. Annabelle says, Jude, I don't even want to walk home now that I've heard that. That is fucking scary. I, to I fucking told you that something was making a noise outside of my bedroom window, but no one believes me until it's too late. I'm going to have to wait a bit before I can leave. Fuck that. I I'm not getting murdered on the way home when I have lived here all of my life. It's fine. It's fine. We will just smoke another joint real quick. Maybe the smell of weed will cause the animal to go away. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Rick rolls up a joint real quick and lights it up. He takes a hit of the joint and passes it to Annabelle. They both blow the, sm they both blow the smoke out the window and the sound of the heavy breathing disappears. Later that night, after Annabelle went home and everyone was asleep, Rick was woken suddenly from his sleep by a bright light shining through his window. It was so bright that he couldn't see anything at all. The bright lights make a weird flying noise, and then all of a sudden, it just disappears and the room goes black again. He thought to himself, what the fuck was that? And went back to sleep. The next morning, Rick wakes up and steps outside for his morning joint when he notices flashing lights coming from down the road. The lights look to be coming from the right side of the road, which would be Tanner's house. Rick puts his joint out and runs down the road in his robe to Tanner's house. The police are just finishing up and ready to leave, getting ready to leave. Annabelle, Victor, and Henry are standing in the road as Rick joins them. What in the hell is going on, Rick says. Annabelle says, Apparently Tanner's father went missing last night. Tanner claims that a bright light came about and his father disappeared. Wait, what? Victor says, I know, right? An actual UFO sighting right here? Annabelle says, dude, this is not what happened. Get over yourself and your theories. Rick walks up to Tanner's house and walks inside the house. Tanner is sitting on the couch all slumped over and looks up at Rick and smiles. Tanner says Rick's name 
and gets up off the couch and walks over to him. Tanner wraps his arms around Rick and gives him the longest hug of his life. Tanner says, Can I stay with you guys tonight? I really don't want to be alone in this house right now after what happened. Rick says, Yes, son. You can stay with us tonight. I hope you don't mind sharing a queen-size bed. Tanner laughs and stops hugging him and grabs his hand and they begin to walk out, out up to Tanner's room. Tanner begins packing some things up and heads back to Hillary's with Rick. Later that night, Tanner decides to stay in Rick's room while staying at Hillary's house. Adam put up a little bit of a fuss earlier at dinner when Tanner made up his mind to hang and stay with Rick. Adam ended up storming off to his room and didn't finish his dinner. Rick and Tanner don't do much but watch some television and relax. Tanner fell asleep first as he was holding Rick in his arms. Rick felt really comfortable and liked the way that this felt. He wished that he could have this kind of comfort all the time. He had wondered what it would be like to be in an actual relationship and to have this kind of support and love, but he knew with his past and his problems that that was in another life. This wave of happiness he didn't think would last long, especially when did he get the chance to cuddle with a shirtless half straight man? He was going to take advantage of the situation. Rick eventually fell asleep as the night went on. This was one of the first nights that he didn't hear the breathing and growling outside of his window as he slept. Twenty four hours earlier. Tanner's father is walking around his living room when all of a sudden a bright light surrounds the house and the house begins to shake. Confused and drunk, he can't believe what is happening before his eyes. The front door slams open and ghostly figures of alien beings walk into the house and approach Tanner's father. He begins to scream as they grab him and begin to take him out of the house. He puts up a fight, but one of the beings injects him with something and he passes out. The alien beings leave the house and the door slams shut behind them. The bright light disappears and the house goes silent. Tanner is standing at the top of the stairs in complete and utter disbelief and shock. The next day, Rick walks Tanner back to his house the next afternoon and Tanner hugs and kisses Rick on the cheek as they say goodbye. Rick walked away feeling super confident about the night before and hoped that they would continue their relationship further. He didn't know what this meant actually. Is this just a friend thing or is, going, or is this going to turn into something long term? So many questions went through his mind as it raced. He needed to smoke to relax himself. He decided to walk the other trail over to Annabelle's house. Rick arrives at Annabelle's and she was more than happy to see him. He walks into the living room and sits down right away. Annabelle begins to roll a blunt up with her fingers as John is standing in the corner complaining about Henry again and how much their relationship sucks and that they should have never gotten married. Rick tells Annabelle, Rick tells Annabelle about what Tanner had saw the night before with his father and she told him that Victor would be the one to talk to about this alien kind of stuff. Victor reads up on all of this stuff and he should be home later. Him and Adam were supposed to be over at the barn. They end up smoking two more blunts and the sun sits in the countryside. Rick decides that he should probably head home. He says goodbye to Annabelle and begins walking back to Hillary's house. Rick is quiet, walking quietly down the road when he hears some rattling noise in the bushes beside him. He stops and tries to listen for anything that he could hear. The breathing starts up and he can hear it super close to him. He begins to freak out a bit. Because he thinks that the weed is messing with his mind. He starts to walk faster and now he hears tiny footsteps behind him. 
He ends up running up to the door of the house and gets inside and freaks himself out by closing and locking the door as fast as he can. Brick walks into the kitchen and Hillary startles him once more. Well, hello, dear. You startled me. I was just finished cleaning up the kitchen. I baked some cookies. Hillary says, Hey, you startled me as well. Felt like something was following me outside on the way home. Oh, that is just silly. There isn't anything in these woods that would harm you. Well, maybe a bear or a wolf. But those are few and far between, darling. <laughs> Hillary sets the plate of cookies on the counter and walks over to the table. So have you thought about what are you going to do here yet? Are, are you going to look for another job? Or what are your plans after taking this break? I honestly don't know what I'm going to do just yet. Rick begins walking back to his bedroom. Well, if you need anything, dear, let me know. Rick, Rick's door shuts and Hillary walks into her room and shuts her door as well. Adam and Victor are walking the trail back to his trailer when they come across something surprising hidden in the woods. They come across a big cave hidden in the rocks and trees. Above the cave sat a giant tree, like a weeping willow, whose arms covered the entrance to the cave. Adam looks to Victor and tells him, absolutely not, dude. Victor mentions to Adam with his curiosity that he will come back the next day in the daylight and check out the new found cave. Little did Adam and Victor know was that something was in the cave, hidden in the dark, breathing and growling, waiting to come out for its next victim. <laughs> All righty, wow. That was part two, that was Bleeding Hearts. Well. Um, yeah, so we had a few references in that. If you remember, where did it go? Oh, Annabelle mentions that Northern Heights is the town that has some weird paranormal activity. Um, that they have an insane asylum that they turned into a hotel back in the 2000s. Well, um, I haven't premiered this yet, but I have another story called Christmas about a Santa Claus killer that escapes an insane asylum in a town called Northern Heights coming soon. So I just wanted to throw that out there that all my stuff is connected in some way. <laughs> just like Stephen King. <laughs> kind of, I guess. I don't know. And then some of importance. Well, aliens showed up. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And then at the end, you want to notice that Adam and Victor found a cave. Good to know. Because I believe that's what episode four, yeah, the four is called, the cave in the woods. But we're going to get to that later. We'll get to that in a couple weeks. Next week's episode's called The Burning. <laughs> so yeah. So that's it for episode two or part two, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it. Um, so yeah, we will see you next week. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel. Anybody notice that I got a new mask this season? Yeah, pretty cool. It's really different. Yeah. Yeah, I like the skull. Oh, cool, it looks like a, a demon. Or is that like, what 
whatever that is. I don't know what the fuck that is. I don't know. But anyways, all right. So that's it. Um, everybody have a good weekend. Um, have a good night. And all right, deuces, people. Bye. I've missed your calls for months it seems Don't realize how mean I can be Cause I can sometimes treat the people That I love like jewelry Cause I can change my mind each day I didn't mean to try you on But I still know your birthday And your mother's favorite song so I'm sorry to my unknown lover Sorry that I can't believe That anybody ever really Starts to fall in love with me Sorry to my unknown lover Sorry I could be so blind Didn't mean